Welcome, folks, to the Season 6 premiere of Fish Report Live. I'm Craig Fissinger. That's Ken Francis back in the sound room. The guys are back. Our guys we call TK and Heavy D. We're going to join them a little bit later in the program. And, Ken, for any uh, first-time viewers that are watching us wondering, what the heck is a Fish Report Live? We like to talk about high school sports, don't we? Yes, we do, Craig. Uh, we cover high school sports uh, throughout the Shelby County League, the MAC, the GWAC, the CCC. And, uh, you know, we interview coaches, we interview players, we interview athletic directors, officials, uh, media, whatever we can get our hands on, Craig. And we have a lot of fun doing it. Hard to believe it's our sixth season, Craig. We've come a long way since uh, season number one when we had a, a milk crate and uh, <laughs> some pieces of paper that we were holding up. So, uh, Thanks for uh, having us back again and uh, looking forward to another good season. Yeah, anxious to get started tonight. We're going to talk about a lot of fall sports, and we're going to talk to a couple special people tonight as well. Yes, we are, Craig. Talking uh, media tonight right off the bat with Colin Foster, the sports writer. Covers all the MAC sports uh, for the Daily Daily Standard up in Salina. Uh, really looking forward to talking to Colin, getting his take on the early part of the football season in the MAC. And also, Craig, going to talk to senior golfer from Rushi, Maddie Borchers. Maddie Borchers has had a great career for the Rushi Raiders golf team. Looking forward to speaking to her and seeing how her game is going uh, early in the season. Yeah, can't wait to get to those two interviews. But before we do that, Ken, we've been doing this since way back in the beginning is a weekly poll question. Going to ch try to change it up a little bit this season and get the viewers to respond via Twitter. So uh, still going to ask a poll question. In the past, we've always given our viewers choices of answers. Not going to do that tonight. We're just going to leave it wide open and let them reply. So why don't you read tonight's poll question? Well, Craig, like you said, we're updating uh, to a little more modern-day technology uh, using the Twitter feed to uh, land our answers, Craig. Tonight's question is, to our viewers, which local sports team will be the most exciting to watch this fall? Tweet us the skull in the sport. You can even tell us why you feel that team will be good to watch this year. We'll look forward to reading some of the answers at the end of our show. Yeah, I just sent that out on our Twitter uh, page, and hopefully uh, some of our viewers will respond to that. At the end of the show, like you said, we'll, we'll go back to the sound room, talk to the guys back there, and maybe they can show us, if our technology is working right, maybe yeah. they can show us a couple of their favorite responses. So look forward to that at the end of the show. All right, Ken, well, let's get things started. And uh, I love fall sports because, you know, there's, there's so many sports to talk about. There's golf, there's football, there's volleyball, and, of course, one of my favorite sports, cross country. Mm -hmm. uh, who, who's playing well? Who's running well so far this season in your eyes? Well, Craig, I'm a cross country fan as well. Uh, don't have anybody running anymore for the Raiders, but uh, still follow the sport a lot. Uh, as always, Craig, uh, like death and taxes, but the <laughs> Minster Wildcats, girls cross country team once again loaded, Craig. Uh, they're off to a great start this year. Uh, they've ran two meets so far. Uh, they won the Bob Show invite, Craig, where they were led by Caitlin Albers. And uh, last weekend, Craig, they went up to the Lightning Fast Course in Columbus Grove, uh, one of the fastest courses in Ohio. That night they, or that day, they were led by freshman Emma Watke. So the Lady Wildcats again loaded for bear. Uh, the Rushi Raiders, Craig, also was a very good team this year. Again, they've been very consistent for the last 10 years. Coach Doug Foster's got his girls again. Top of the Shelby County League, Craig. They finished second at the Bob Shoal. They won the Covington Invite. They're led by sophomore running star Anna Fissinger. And uh, what's making them really good this year, Craig, very tight pack. They run the top six, seven girls very close together. Very important when it comes to cross country. And on the boys' side, we've been particularly blessed in the SCAL the last couple of years with a lot of good teams. No different this year. No different this year, Craig. Uh, you know, I think a couple of years ago, might have been last year, we sent three teams to the state out of the Troy Regional, Craig. Uh, this year, again, uh, lots of talent in the Shelby County League. Fort Laramie Redskins, Craig, uh, they won the Shelby County League 
uh, preview. Got a very good team this year, Craig. They're led by sophomore Jack, Jake Reithman and uh, Anna Craig. They're going to be right there with the Redskins all year. They're led by senior running star Lucas Huber. And, uh, you know, there's going to be other teams that uh, uh, surprise us throughout the year, Craig. But when it comes to cross country, you know, you got to stay healthy. And, uh, you know, you're only as good as that fifth runner. You got to have depth. You've got to plan on injuries. And uh, you got to hope, you know, just because you're running well right now or if you're uh, winning everything right now, what really counts, Craig, is the first weekend in November. And, uh, you know, if you have an injury happen uh, late October, it can really hurt you down the road. All right. And let's talk quickly about volleyball. Some of the best volleyball in the state always played over in this part of Ohio. Uh, what teams are playing early well or what teams are playing well early so far absolutely craig you know it seems like year in and year out you either got a shelby county league team or a max school or a layman or somebody like that uh doing very well in the postseason this year craig probably won't be any different uh, you've got the defending state champion uh jackson center tigers craig they're led by cassie meyer uh she was a shelby county league player of the year last year and uh, in the MAC, Craig, the MAC is again loaded with uh, good volleyball teams with Coldwater, New Knoxville, Marion Local, Versailles. But keep an eye on the New Bremen Cardinals. New Bremen is sitting at 6-2 and two right now. They took the Jackson Center Tigers to a five-game match just the other night. They're led by uh, Michigan commit Paige Jones, and uh, she is a leaper. She can flat out play volleyball. So she can almost single-handedly win you some games. So uh, uh, New Bremen, very good. Jackson Center, very good. And uh, a lot of contingent of other good teams uh, in the area. All right, and both those sports we just talked about here real quickly, both good spectator sports, cross-country. You see a lot of fans out on the cross-country course. And volleyball, of course, you get a lot of fans in the gym for those games. One sports that's not a great spectator sport is, is probably golf, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean there's not good talent, does it? Right, Craig. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, a lot of good talent in this area. And uh, on the boys' side, you've got uh, Fort uh, Anna, Fort Laramie, Farallon, all very good teams in the Shelby County League this year. Uh, Anna is led by the defending Shelby County League Player of the Year, Zach Watron. Fort Laramie has Brad Guttemiller, also a very good golfer. And Farallon, very deep this year, very consistent with the team they've got. So look for those three teams there to battle it out in the Shelby County League. And in the MAC, you've got St. Henry, Versailles, Minster appear to be the cream of the crop. Yeah, and over on the girls' side, those same MAC teams you mentioned, uh, Minster, St. Henry, and Versailles, both seem to be good as well on the girls' side. And the SCAL, Ken, though, not really a, a conference battle, and that's because only two schools have teams in, in Rushi and Fort Laramie. Uh, but that doesn't mean there aren't good players. And one of those good players is actually a senior for the Rushi Raiders. She's Maddie Borchers. We're happy to have her live on the phone right now. Maddie, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Well, listen, uh, Ken and I were just talking a little bit how the, the, the SCAL conference doesn't really have, a, a, I guess, a conference battle because it's just you and, and Fort Army with teams. But uh, I, want, I want to ask you, I mean, is there a misconception out there? Or, or in your opinion, why doesn't the, the SCAL have more girls playing golf? Um, I think that problem really uh, deals more with there not being junior high girls golf teams. So in junior high, girls are playing volleyball or running cross country. So when they get to high school, you know, they don't even think like, oh, I could play golf because they already committed to another sport a couple years ago. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and I can I know for a fact uh, a couple girls that uh, didn't start going out for golf until their junior years. And uh, that freshman, sophomore year, like you said, used to play in volleyball or maybe running cross country. They finally decided a couple years into it, hey, I'd like to try golf. So uh, uh, a good point with that. Uh, you know, earlier in the show, Maddie, we were also talking about – uh, you know, sports like football that are just into going into week three. Your your season actually got started quite a, a while ago, back at the beginning of August. Uh, so I want to ask you, how are the Lady Raiders doing right now? How, how are they playing as a team? How are you playing individually right now? Well, you know, we lost four seniors last year who are a really important part of our team. So we do have a really young team with um, only me and my sister Shay being the only returning varsity players. So considering the circumstances, we're doing pretty well. But, you know, we're always looking to improve. And then for me personally, I mean, it's golf. There's good days and there's bad days, but I'm pretty happy with how it's going. I have some nine-hole scores in the 40s, 18-hole scores in the 90s. So overall, it's okay. Hi, Maddie. This is Ken. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, first of all, you were a very successful team last year. You said you lost four seniors off that team, but you were an instrumental part of that team that laid, led the Raiders to the, to the district tournament. W losing all these seniors, you have to kind of uh, refocus your goals. 
What what are your goals this year, both individually and as a team? Yeah, so again, like since we are so young, our goal mainly is just to keep improving every day we're out there, always looking to lower our individual scores and our team scores. Personally, for me, though, I'm hoping to return to Pipestone one last time for my third shot at the districts. But, you know, it's going to take some hard work to get there, but I'm hoping I make it. Maddie, last week Fish Report had the opportunity to, to go out to Stillwater Golf Course and watch uh, the Rushi Raiders, uh, Fort Loamy Redskins, and Arcanum uh, in a golf match. Fort Loamy, of course, Maddie, they've got one of the best golfers in Ohio in Emily Knopf. Uh, talk about Emily a little bit. You had the opportunity to play with her. How can she help your game? What do you see in Emily that uh, can make Maddie a, a better player? Oh, yeah. I've gotten to play with Emily a few times, actually, and I've actually gotten the chance to become friends with her over the years through golf, and she's an awesome person. But what I've learned the most from her is she perfectly shows that hard work and focus leads to good results. I mean, every girls golfer in the area knows Emily has a strict and rigid golf schedule practice-wise throughout the whole year. And I think golf more than any other uh, than any other sport shows that correlation between hard work and good results and she just proves it better than anyone else in the area yeah maddie she definitely has a she's obviously been very successful during her four-year career at fort Lormy. uh let's talk a little bit about uh, your other sport uh, you play softball very good softball for the for the talented rushi raider softball team uh rushi's got a very good program now under coach mullenkamp and uh Tell me, what's it tougher? Tougher to hit a golf ball straight or tougher to hit a softball right up the middle? <laughs> well, I wouldn't classify either as easy, but if I had to pick the less difficult one, I'd probably go with golf simply because the ball's not moving weird directions when it's coming at you. Mm -hmm. Like It's sitting still when you have to hit it. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good Keller point. Can, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Hey, listen, Maddie, one more question. We'll let you go. I know you're just starting your senior year, but uh, any thoughts on uh, the end of your senior year and, and heading off to college, any college you're interested in right now, and, and, and any thoughts of maybe playing some college sports? Um, I'm definitely still looking at colleges, trying to figure you know, my future out. But I think if, the right, if I found the right school and the right opportunity presented itself with either golf or softball, I definitely have to look into it. All right. Well, you still got a little time for that, so uh, we're, we're we're not meaning to rush you or anything. But uh, <laughs> hey, listen. Uh, thanks for joining us on the show tonight, Maddie. Uh, best of luck the rest of the season, and, and we hope to see you real soon. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Maddie. Good luck this year. Yep. Thanks. Bye. All right. That was Rushi, senior golfer and softball player, Maddie Borchers, and Ken. I know you used to be a golfer at one time, and uh, I think even a softball player, although yeah. slow pitch. Uh -huh. So, uh, how about you? What's uh, what's easier to hit, the golf ball or the softball? Well, I'd have to disagree with Maddie on this one. I'd have to say a softball because when I hit a golf ball, Craig, that thing went all over the place. <laughs> it went left, it went right, and it didn't very often go up the middle. So, I'd have to say a softball. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, good stuff. Listen, we're got, that's going to wrap it up for the first half of our show. We're going to take a short break, but stay right there because when we come back, we're going to talk about Mac football with Daily Standard sports writer Colin Foster. Get it quick. 
questions We're all here just looking for a high And we're all beautifully broken here tonight Welcome back to the second half of Fish Report Live, everyone. Before the break, we were talking cross-country, volleyball, and golf. Uh, now we're going to talk, I guess, one of our favorite sports, of course, and that is football, in particular, Mac football. And uh, you can, you know, there's nobody that knows more about Mac football than our guest tonight. He was actually uh, been a guest on the show several times, even co-hosted our show once, didn't he? Yes, he did, Craig. And when you talk high school football, Craig, you can't not talk about the Mac. I mean, they, year in and year out, Craig, it's the best football division in Ohio, not necessarily just the best small school division in Ohio. I would almost have to say it is the best football division in Ohio. Uh, when you look at the state championships they've won from Coldwater, Marion Local, and Minster, and Fort Recovery, over the years and years and years of state championships, throw the St. Henry Redskins in there. They've won some, and, and it's, uh, it's just amazing how many they've actually uh, accomplished over there. And the guy that has the honor of covering all those teams, Craig, is uh, our guest tonight, and that's Colin Foster. I believe we got him live on the phone right now. Colin, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Yeah, hey, listen, you know, we were just talking about football, in particular Mac football. You know, we love following, and I know you love writing about it, but you write about sports all year long. Be truthful with me. Is this your favorite time of year? I mean, you definitely can't beat Friday Night Lights, especially in this part of the state. Uh, I'd say, I mean, minus from, like, the absurdly long hours I work, uh, especially on Friday nights this year, this time of year, this is probably my favorite time of the year. Obviously a big basketball guy, too, um, so I love that time of year. But when you get to playoff time, big games throughout the season, um, like the one coming up this week between Marion and Coldwater, I mean, nothing compares to Mac football. you got a group competing for uh, for state, state uh, titles every year, so you definitely can't beat it. All right, well, it's still early, Colin. We've only got two weeks in the book, heading into week three right now. But is it early enough to make any assumptions about any individual teams in the MAC or maybe any individual players right now? I mean, Marion Local and Coldwater are Marion Local and Coldwater. Um, if you look at those teams, we'll obviously find out a little bit more about them this, this week going against each other. But, I mean, I think at the end of the season, they're going to be where they're, when they normally are. Um, that's just my opinion. I think Fort Recovery has a, has a chance at repeating state state champs. I don't think that region will be uh, will be easy by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you look at Minster. I mean, I think a lot of people looked at Minster and said, "Who really knows what to expect without Josh Nixon?" And I mean, you look at what they've done to this part in the season. Um, two wins. They've had two guys rush for 200 plus yards in the last two weeks, and they just they just beat Lehman pretty good last week. I mean, that was a team that almost upset Fort Recovery coming out of the gate. So I think they could they could possibly be there at the end of the year, too, um, right in the mix of that region of Fort Recovery. Um, individuals, from an ind individual standpoint, I think Coldwater's Dylan Toby's been really uh, a really solid first-year starter for them at quarterback. Caleb Martin, Will Holman, I mean, they're expected to be really great this year for Fort Recovery after last year's state run. And uh, they've obviously been just that coming out of the gate here. And uh, Marion local Dwayne Lawyer, he's been really good for them too at quarterback. The guy who um, basically split reps with Cole Greaseborn last year at quarterback. And he's uh, he came out and he's really showed what kind of dual threat guy he could be with his legs and with his arms. Of course, you got, uh, in my opinion, uh, Colin, and a couple other guys I want to mention. Bryce Meesing, I think you kind of alluded to him with a big rushing game last week at Minster. Uh, he's uh, he's going to be a, a, a real uh, load for a lot of teams this year. And uh, I know another guy we probably don't hear a lot about is a uh, is John Dirksen over there at the Marion Locoy. He's a four-star offensive yeah. lineman. I heard he's got some yeah, offers uh, from big schools right now. Yeah, um, I definitely want to get across, across from him under center. He's yeah. a uh, big guy and uh, – uh, it's not fair <laughs> compared to a lot of the guys he's going against at that level. I mean, um, he's going to be a special player at some college someday. Hi, Colin. This is Ken. Uh, like Craig said, we're only a couple weeks into the season. 
Uh, but is there anything you're waiting to see, or is there is there is there anything uh, that's uh, that's going to make Colin Foster form an opinion on? Okay, these two teams are going to be the best teams in the MAC, or is like maybe the game this weekend. Uh, what what do you what's your anticipation? I mean, I, I've said I'm not really like, trying to trying to pick teams here and there, but I, I've said I think from from the beginning I think Marion Local is probably the favorite just based on on the fact that they have so many guys back. And, um, I mean, obviously, Fort Recovery and, and Coldwater are going to be threats. The thing I'm really looking forward to seeing um, is New Bremen. It's a pretty cool start for them. I mean, obviously, they, they've started 2-0, and I think that's the first time they've started 2-0 uh, since 2004. Um, obviously, the strength of schedule isn't what it's going to be throughout the rest of the season. And uh, this week's going to be kind of telling to see them go against St. Henry, and, and then the week after that, they get Anna. So... Um, and that's another team I think that, that's going to be really improved, and a team that's going to be uh, have a chance at, at making some noise is Anna. They're two and zero right now. I was just randomly in Subway and Anna um, over the weekend, and I well, they had like a schedule up for their football game, and, and I was looking at it, and I'm like, wow, they really have a chance at, at running the table until I think week six, and they play Marion. So they could be a team that that possibly can be for a MAC championship. What's your thoughts on Fort Recovery, perhaps? They put a thumping on Fort Laramie, I believe, last week, and there's this team that uh, won a state title. Uh, any thoughts of them doing well this season? Absolutely. I, like I said earlier, I, I think they have a chance that, uh, that really um, at repeating a state champs. I mean, I, I think you look at them and, and you got to say they're the favorite. But as, as I previously mentioned, I don't think that region is going to be – as um, as down as I think initially expected, I think there's going to be a lot of teams that could could really challenge. But full recovery last year, just I got I got the opportunity to, to kind of follow them as the, uh, as the as basically their entire playoff run, and I mean they were just playing such well, such great football as a team um, once week twelve hit, and I honestly thought they had a chance. Um, I, I would have liked to. And I know a lot of people have said this. Have seen that um, Marion Local Fort Recovery rematch towards the end of last year because that Fort Recovery was um, one of the they got a lot stronger as the year progressed. Colin, yeah, I, I don't see Fort Recovery compete for state. I, I honestly expect Fort Recovery to win it all again. Wow. Colin, let's talk a little bit about the big game Friday night. You've got cool water against Marion Local. You briefly mentioned it before. Uh, you know, th- there's always a lot of hype around this game, but uh, how how big is this game for the for the communities? How big is this game for the fans, the players, the coaches? Um, you know, or is it just the media that gets excited about this one? Honestly, you, you see people. That game, I, I got my first chance to actually cover that game last year. And you see people come from all over the different parts of the state to come watch that because that is basically the uh, the mecca of high school football games, small school football right there, Cold Water, Maryland local. I mean, they're, they're there year in, year out. I, I'd say probably the two most dominant small school teams in the state on a yearly basis. So, um, yeah, there's obviously a lot of hype in the communities, the school. Um, we hype it up quite a bit because it's a huge game. And, I mean um, – yeah, I think a lot of a lot of people look forward to that, and it's really weird this year because it's in week three versus like I think week seven. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's still a lot of football to be played after it. But yeah, it's, it's a big deal. Obviously, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna see people paying attention to that game from across the state, and for good reason. How about the fifty fifty? Do you do you think you'll get in the fifty fifty over there this week or not? I, I probably will. I was really bummed that I didn't here. Um, but yeah, I can't remember the exact number. It was, I want, I want to say it was above ten thousand last year. It was up there big time. I might go to the game just to get in the fifty-fifty. <laughs> if you can get in the gate, can if you can get if you can get a seat. That's right. Better get there early. Yeah, if you um if you want me to throw like ten bucks down for you, just let me know. <laughs> All right, we'll do that. Hey, listen, Colin, one more question and change the subject a little bit here, but uh, a couple weeks ago, T- TK and I had the opportunity to get, to get over to the uh, Covington home football game, and uh, they honored uh, a few individuals over there heading into their Hall of Fame. One of those guys just happened to be your dad, Doug Foster, who was a very, very successful cross-country coach over there at Covington, and uh, actually he's a successful cross-country coach right now for our Rushi Raiders. 
But uh, give us a little insight here. What was that moment like for your dad, and what was that like for you? Because I know you were in attendance. Yeah, it was, it was a really special moment for him. Um, it was a really special moment for my mom and myself. I mean, I've obviously been around cross-country all my life. Um, I've seen the success my dad has had. Um, and it was just really cool to see all these guys stick in front of me who were runners for him, like, way back in the 90s. Basically, people who I grew up with um, – being their like cowboy, their manager, getting picked on by them. <laughs> it was really cool to see all those guys, and I, I was really happy to be in it, to actually get a go to it for one. I just wish I could have maybe stayed and celebrated with everyone after the game. But yeah, it was definitely a, an amazing moment. I'm proud of them. Um, yeah, it was a great time. Colin, listen, I, we're, we're, the, the came over and uh, came to that too. That was a um, really neat thing. Listen, Colin, we're pretty proud of him, too. We really like him over here in Rushi and uh, be proud of him as a dad as well. So, listen, uh, appreciate you taking your time to be on our show tonight. Uh, I know you're busy. You're getting hyped up for that big game Friday night. Have fun. Uh, enjoy the game. And, uh, you know, you do a great job writing for the Daily Standard and look forward to reading your articles. All right. Thanks, guys. Always love to be on. All right. Take, take care. All right. Thank you. All right, that was Daily Standard sports writer Colin Foster. And, Ken, what, what do you think? If, if, if Rushi had a Hall of Fame, you think Coach Foster would make Rushi's Hall of Fame as well? Well, Craig, I think he would. Uh, you know, from a coaching standpoint, uh, he's been here uh, for 10, 11 years. I think he's brought teams to the state cross-country meet every year. And uh, he's responsible for a lot of the banners hanging up in Claire Scene of O Gymnasium. So uh, he's done a great job with the cross-country boys and girls programs. And, uh, you know, he was successful at Covington. He's been successful at Rushi. He definitely has, that's for sure. All right, Ken, well, let's get back to the sound room, checking with the guys for the first time this season. TK and Heavy D, there they are right there, Ken. And uh, guys, welcome back to season number six. Glad you could uh, join us again this year. And, uh, you know, we take those three months off in, in June, July, and August. And uh, what what the heck do you guys do for three months if, if you're not uh, coming here every week for the show? Um, I took a nap. <laughs> And watched a lot of Olympics this summer. That was fun. I can say a lot of Olympics for me, and uh, had a lot of fun watching this guy show the world how good uh, runners from this area could be. And that was that was great fun just to see him develop over the summer, and then ended up with that uh, spectacular performance at the uh, Olympics down in Rio. That was a lot of fun. That was good. Of course, that's Clayton Murphy, and and uh, yeah, Ken, he was on this show. What? A uh, few years ago, we had him on here. Absolutely, Craig. And, uh, you know, we spotted a star when we knew it, didn't we? And, uh, but yeah, congratulations to Clayton Murphy. Uh, you know, you, you, not only did you make uh, Tri Village in New Madison proud, you made this whole entire area proud. Uh, it was, uh, it was awesome to watch. And, uh, you know, uh, congratulations. And we look forward to uh, hopefully, Clayton, if you're listening to us out there tonight, uh, hopefully being back on our show again one of these times. What do you think, guys? Any room in the sound room for him there, maybe between you two? Uh, any room there? Might be able to squeeze him in here. I'd say we could squeeze him in. He might uh, have to slide over a little bit. He's going to have some stuff hanging on his chest he, probably. He's a pretty thin guy, though. He's a pretty he thin is. Guy. He is, but he's got a little extra hardware with him now. Probably squeeze <laughs> it on my side a little easier. <laughs> Well, listen, guys, one of the things we did tonight, or we tried to do at least, was a, uh, a, a new poll question, a new way of doing our poll question. We wanted to see our viewers' uh, Twitter responses, and I don't think the technology quite worked out for that. But uh, I'm going to have Ken read the poll question again, and uh, I want to get your thoughts on that, uh, on what you guys think. Your We're opinion. asking our uh, viewers tonight, uh, Craig, which local sports team will be the most exciting to watch this fall? Tweet us a school in the sport, and uh, you can even tell us why you feel that they're going to be uh, successful and fun to watch. So uh, we look on our Twitter feed. We, sh we had hoped that we could be sharing them with you up here on the screen tonight, but uh, like Craig said, uh, not quite working quite right yet. Well, I got one Twitter reply that, that I did pull up here. I don't think we can get it up on the screen, but uh, this guy, can't, his Twitter, uh, his handle is FL. Coach Turner, I think we all know who that guy is, but yeah. uh, he said the the Larmy Boys golf team gets my excitement level up each match, but that not that's not necessarily a good thing. But uh, <laughs> anyway, he said uh, he's picking the Larmy Boys golf team. Of course, you well, mentioned I, them earlier in the show. I, awfully I, good this year. I did, you know, and they got uh, they got a very good golfer in in uh, Gutter right, Miller, yeah, and right, uh, Gutter you know, I seen where Rosengarden's playing really well for him right now. So I uh, got a good uh, good contingent of golfers. And I know you rattled off a bunch of teams earlier in cross country and and uh, volleyball. Right. Guys, what about you back there? Any any teams you're looking forward to watching this season? 
Yeah, I like watching Laurie play with with Brad Gutmiller coming back. Um, and uh, I like Anna also. I like watching Zach watch him play. A couple good athletes there from the golf side. And of course, Rushi's got a couple good golfers as well. I saw uh, last night in a match where uh, Jack Dapor was actually the medalist in a, in a small small match. So uh, they've got a, a, a couple couple guys that are uh, capable of, of playing well too. I'm going to put a shout out for the defending state champion Jackson Center Lady Tigers. Uh, great volleyball program over, over there by Coach Metz, and uh, you know they got a lot of uh, volleyball players back this year. They're off to a great start, and uh, a lot of athleticism over there. They went, they won state in volleyball. They went to state in girls basketball, and uh, hey, they're loaded for bear again. TK, I know you uh, last year you were big into the cross country. This year, not so much uh, because that uh, root, former Rushi star Molly Kearns isn't running anymore. But uh, uh, we've, we've watched Minster for years, and they, they always run well at the beginning of the season, uh, run well at the end of the season, but uh, that elusive state title has, has been kind of tough for them in recent years. What do you think? This year are they capable of it? Um, always always tough to get that state title, no matter how, how good you are uh, throughout the season because it takes – Take something special. We see it every year. Uh, you've been there. We've been there for many years at the state. And the team that wins it always pulls out something special. Some kid pulls out a spectacular run, knocks a minute off or something. So uh, not sure if they got it. We'll see as, it, as the season moves on. Seems like sometimes they run a little bit too much, and we'll, we'll see how that works out this year. Uh, another team that does have me excited is, is the Rushi Raider. Girls cross country. Did get to see them run a little bit. Um, like the way... Like Ken said, they're running good pack, uh, running together as a team, and I'm, I'm really excited about the way they've come out earlier this season. All right, guys, that, that's good stuff. And, yeah, we'll look forward to paying attention more to those sports as the, uh, as the fall sports season goes on. That's going to wrap it up for our show tonight. I do want to say special thanks to our guests, Matty Borchers from Rushi and Colin Foster from the Daily Standard. Ken and I and the crew will all be back again next week, same time, same place. Until then, have a great rest of the week, everyone, and good night. Hanging at the fish report. 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 For your latest news in high school sports, tune in to the fish report. Don't need no bed, don't need no pull. When you tune in to the fish report. Hanging at the fish report.